Welcome everyone to the New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. On this week's show, we're in Western Newfoundland fishing for Atlantic salmon. My timing is great. The salmon have really started running in the local rivers. Barry and Janice Sweetland, owners of Where You Want to Be Lodge, have invited me to stay with them. They've assured me with 12 salmon rivers in the area to choose from, our chances of success are high. We'll talk about the setups, equipment, flies, and everything else you'll need for success. Stay with us, it's going to be another great show. Let them go back to live another day. And away he goes. Great fish. Wow. Oh, baby! Look at that fish. Stop, wiggle, on the way down. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association. Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions. On this week's show, we visit Where You Want to Be Lodge, located in Newfoundland. This small drive-to full-service lodge can accommodate a limit of four anglers per week. Guests enjoy all the expected luxuries of a modern hotel while absorbing the peaceful tranquility of a country setting. Our host and main guide is Barry Sweetland, who has been traveling the backcountry of scenic western Newfoundland since boyhood. He's an avid angler, fly tire, and all-round outdoor enthusiast. Best of all, he's truly a pleasure to spend time on the river with. His in-depth knowledge and outgoing personality will help make this both a successful and fun trip. Atlantic salmon are an indication of clean, unspoiled water that runs wild to the sea. Salmon are considered one of the most beautiful fish, streamlined, silver, and graceful. Best of all, they're among the greatest fighters in the fishing world, which is why they're so keenly sought out by fly fishers from around the globe. On my first morning on the water, I was accompanied by guide John McCarthy, also known as Big John. A retired high school gym teacher, John is a very passionate and knowledgeable angler. His refined Newfoundland humor and good nature personality made him a true pleasure to be with. The technique of swinging wet flies for salmon is very straightforward to understand. You simply cast across and downstream slightly and allow the line to bow to the current and swing across. Repeat this twice and then strip out only six inches of line and cast again. You do this until you reach the limit of your casting ability. Once you're at your limit, take two steps downstream. Do this until you reach the end of the run. This will ensure you've effectively covered all the water. The one reality of Atlantic salmon fishing is that you're constantly casting. I found I was getting tired and needed a rest. I asked John to take my rod and show me how it's done. It took Big John very little time to hook into a fish. <laughs> nice fish. So what's interesting is that I was just casting and I said, John, I'm going to sit down for a second and have a break. And I gave him my rod and he had told me a couple times, go fish over there. That's like an apartment building over there. They'll sit there and take a break out of the current. And how many casts you make? Two? Three? That, Two three. the bomber and boom. And he's ready to come in? I believe he is. Not a big fish, but a nice one. Oh, look at that. Uh, maybe she's not. And the best part, on a dry fly. I mean, that's the best thing about Newfoundland uh, salmon fishing. You can do a lot of it with a, a dry fly, which is fantastic. I have a good friend who will fish any wet fly, providing the floats. <laughs> and like I said earlier, the best thing is dry fly fishing. You get all these rivers around here with all this great fishing. This is fantastic. OK? I'm going to go down here. Put him on the other side of me. Oh, 
And it just... He's off. Easy release. There he goes. Didn't even have to touch him. Beautiful fish. Yeah, you can see him, John. It's a great fish. Good job, my man. Same as a catch and release. Generally, uh, we've fished several different systems uh, the last few days. And uh, this river, you can see there's a lot of tannin or coloring in the water. And generally, I like to fish with a brighter fly there, especially on a dull day like today. Uh, whereas if you get to a, a river like Harry's, where the water is very clear, you may actually want to go to a, to a, a darker fly, maybe. It depends on light conditions. We've got an overcast day today. We've had rain yesterday and this morning, and there's a lot of tannin or staining in the water. So I generally like to go with a little bigger fly and probably a little brighter fly, just to make it a little bit more clear in the water. I think everybody would find that interesting, and, and we'll have some more information about the flies we're using in today's show. Um, thanks a lot, John. Let's, let's get in there and hopefully uh, find ourselves a couple salmon. Tight lines. Well, the thing about it is, with all these rivers at our back door, then we've got uh, opportunities that uh, you know some of our competitors, uh, they just can't offer. They're fixed on a certain pool or a certain section of the river system uh, that if that particular river system is, is failing for some particular reason, uh, the run times are late, the water quality is high, uh, then, uh, then they have a little bit of difficulty trying to find some fish. We don't have that. We've got 12 different river systems, and, and the likelihood of all those 12 river systems failing at the same time is very, very small. So we've got opportunity pretty well throughout the season from day one to closing the end of the season. Way to go, buddy. That's the predator in action again, is it? You got him well hooked. Holy cow. Slicking on you, hey? Keep going. All right, that's good, that's good. John can land him. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, this is a nice grill. Look at this. Right in the lower lip. Right where you're supposed to hook him. Yes, sir. No one outside. So how many fish was this for you today now that you hooked today? I've lost four, landed one. Uh, <laughs> uh, this would be number two? Number two landed. If you ever had one, don't want No, he bore, wants to bore upstream. That one does, there's no doubt. No doubt. He got spawning on him. Yeah, he does. He got spawning on his mind. Here he comes. Sea lice on him. Nice grab. Look at the sea lice. The See? Is, huh? Yeah, look, he's covered in sea lice. Long tails. Definitely yeah. a fish that's in the, in the river for less than 24 hours. Nice and bright. We're probably about 15, 20 kilometers from the ocean. Okay. Yep. Way to go. <laughs> Way to go, yeah. buddy. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Right. Cool. Good, Good for you. All Good right. for you. When considering hook size, I think uh, the amount of coloration is one big factor, how much tannin and coloration there is in the water. A bright fly generally works better for me uh, in those tannin waters. Uh, I believe the phase a river is at, whether it's raising or dropping, is a big factor. Generally, higher rivers, I use a bigger hook and try to get the fly a little deeper where the fish seem to prefer it. And water temperature is a big factor. Above 19, fish don't generally move. And cooler water, the fish lay low, and you want to get a bigger hook to get the hook down to them. The first day was a tough one for me. I had numerous chances, but as Lady Luck would have it, I couldn't solidly hook up on any fish that struck. Time to head back to the lodge for rest, a meal, and to plan the next day's strategies. I know with perseverance, I will be successful. The next morning, conditions were perfect. Barry had done his homework on sourcing where some fresh fish were coming in. I felt confident my luck would change. He's on. We got one on. All right. Now, what's amazing is that, Barry, you basically saw the fish, talked me in, and I was going to pull up, but he took it on the dangle. Yeah, he did. He came up with just very soft take, so we have to be careful with him. but. You've got such great fishing here, and it's so accessible. We drove the truck here. Uh-huh, we did what, so. 15, 20 minutes? That's it. Walked down the, 
the road. Oh, yeah. That's a nice fish. Good, nice yeah. fish. Oh, you, hey, listen, you talked me into it. You Beauty. basically Beauty. told me where he was, and, and I, I'm just sorry I missed that other one. All right, let's see if we can get this guy. Come up a little more. I don't think he's ready. He's very, looks like oh, a no. fresh fish. He, he does look pretty fresh, yeah. Some strong. In this cold oh, water, they get yeah. so much power. Now you're saying, what, what's the water temperature here? It's just over 50. Just over 50, yeah. Well, two days ago, it was 50, actually, it was 50 degrees flat, and uh, she came up about three degrees in the last two days. Oh. oh. Look at the power. Oh. You know, you know, waking a fly, it's very much like dry fly fishing. Oh, it is. It is. It's all visual. Because right? yeah, you visual, see the take. Yeah, you see the take. Like that other one that came up before that I lost, I mean, it was very obvious. Yeah. Come up and smacked it yeah. as it was. Uh, Going across the it's, pool. Uh, it adds another dimension because it's so visual, you know? Yeah. Come here, girl. All right. Good job, Barry. OK. You got those hemostats? Yeah, I got them right here. OK. But I think I got it. OK. You got it? Yeah. Oh, good job. OK. Why don't you show the camera? Get the fly. It's still wrapped around there. Oh, this is, this is a nice, solid, chunky, six, seven pound salmon. It is so, salmon. yeah. That's about exactly right. Beautiful. Nice Beautiful thick across fish. the back. Yeah. Nice. Gorgeous. All right. Good and sound? <laughs> Way to go, buddy. Give Good me the stinky glove. Good for you. Awesome. Give me awesome. the stinky glove. Congratulations. All right. So it's, what, half an hour into the morning, two fish landed one. Perfect. And we're just getting started. That's a learning experience for me, and it's a thrill to catch one on a bomber. You get the big splash and the, the wake, and, uh, and it's just a great way to catch a salmon. Yes, I was very fortunate to find Barry and Janice, and I've been coming to Newfoundland for about 15 years, and I've had just a great experience here. Oh, yeah. First time was crazy, and Actually, then it went soft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but this last one was a good one. Then I let him rest for five minutes. John told me to or Barry told me to let him rest for five minutes. He got him on an orange bomber sitting real high. Yeah. Uh, I've had... Oh. Oh, that's a heavy I've fish. About... Okay, everybody keep the legs together. I don't want him going through somebody's legs. Whoa, there! Keep your legs together! About ready, I believe. Heads lifting. Legs together. Not quite ready. Now, I don't have to tell a seasoned veteran like you, but you turn. Keep, keep my rod up. Yep, keep your rod up. But also, if you get them out in the tide, if you turn your rod, you can ferry them into you. OK. Scale them, Big John. Nice fish. Yeah. Nice fish. Way to go, Jerry. Look at that fish. Yeah, huh? Want to grab it. his tail, Love big it. guy? I think so. you, you got him. I got him. Very good. Oh, wow. God. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. The setup used on this trip is a floating line to a 9-foot leader, to a 3X tippet, and then to a barbless fly. No weight of any kind may be used in or on the system. What's happening right now? Barry's just talking me into a fish. It's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm underneath the bridge. He can see them, and it's a great situation. He's spotting the fish. He's helping me cast the fly to it. I mean, this is why having a great guide is so important. And I hooked that fish. He made three great jumps, and unfortunately threw it. I mean, these are barbless, but there's more salmon. So we're gonna give it a try and see if we can get one of them. Oh, you got him, you got him. Good stuff, good stuff. All right. No, there's not nothing, boy. <laughs> Well, it might be, oh, but they're not he's up there One particularly effective fly during my stay was a pattern named the Predator. Listen as young fly designer Andy Sweetnam tells of how he created this pattern. Well, when I had the pattern in my head, I felt so confident towards the whole concept of it that I had a feeling that I was just going to prey on all these fish, and so it just kind of came to me. I called it the Predator. <laughs> when I first started tying it, it would take me about 10 minutes to really get it down. But I've tied so many of them now that it just comes so naturally. I, I can get one done in about five to six minutes and they're quality flies. 
Attaboy, good fish, good fish. All right. Nice bright fish. All Look right. At How right shiny is that? At the end of the run, and Barry did a great job of talking me into this fish. All right. That was fantastic. What a job well done. Well done, Colin. And this is on his son's fly, the Predator. Was it grill? Yeah. Oh, Whoa, that. isn't oh, that a dandy? Yeah. That's a nice thick grill. Oh, beautiful. This will actually agitate the pool and maybe get the other fish going. Barry, and you, you walked me right in it. We couldn't see it, but you said work the entire pool. And I kept lengthening my cast, and then you saw the movement. You, did awesome. you saw him move it, and he awesome. came right up for that predator. Oh, there he is. Starting to show his head. Where do you want me to bring him? Down here? Yep, down here be good. Okay. So try and get this fish in fairly quick, but he's he'll probably let not me quite know. finished with you yet. No, I don't think so. He's still pretty green. Look at there. There he goes. Oh, oh nice, nice fat fish. Ever bright. Wow. Yeah. Now I'm gonna put the pressure on him. Bring him up. He's coming this way to you. I'll bring him to you. Perfect. It's a nice, fat, chunky grill. Look at that. Look at the brightness. How sweet is that? How sweet is that? Isn't that pretty? Come down, yeah. I'll get my hemostats here. All right, what an incredible fish. I mean, this is just so beautiful. Oh, oh there sorry. he goes. Sorry. I couldn't oh. hang on to him any hey, longer than listen, that. listen, Barry, thank you. Awesome, awesome, that Carl. That's awesome. And I'm telling you, uh, I might have walked into it, but it was your skill. You, you, your casting for that, your presentation was fantastic. Well, thank you. Awesome. Awesome. And we should explain that like, we're just on one of many pools here on Harry's River, and you know them intimately. And what, six, seven? That'd be fish eight we've seen in yeah. here. Yeah, that's right. And this in is the, just one in pool. This one pool, yeah. And the other pool we went to this morning, there was six fish there. Correct, yeah. And we haven't even touched anywhere yeah, else yet. Right. And we had the rest of the day. And this gin clear water makes it so easy to spot them. It's exciting for me as the guy, and it's exciting for you as well, right? Oh, this awesome. takes two, because awesome. they're never subtle. It's just poof. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Let's go get another one. Let's do it. Newfoundland is praised by sportsmen the world over for its natural beauty, abundance of wildlife, and incredible Atlantic salmon fishing. Where You Want to Be Lodge has all of this and more, but not the usual high costs. In fact, a salmon fishing trip here is quite affordable and very accessible. A welcome change for Atlantic salmon fishers who are on a budget. We offer something a little special here. I believe that, uh, that most of our clients that come here uh, they come here as a, you know, for the first time, we hardly know them, but uh, after the day one, we know them quite well, and by the time they leave, they're our friends, and uh, we take great pride in that. It's not just, uh, it's not just uh, another guest. These people, uh, we like to know who they are, who the families are, and in turn, I think that we give them a little piece of ourselves when they, when they leave. And uh, for that reason, I think that's, that's something a little special. Uh, you know, some, some companies, they, they deal with large numbers of people. That's not really our style. We're, we're uh, a four guests per week operation. We keep it quaint, we keep it personal, and, uh, and I think that uh, that pays dividends to everybody at the end of the day. The equipment needed for Atlantic salmon when coming to Western Newfoundland are nine foot stiff action rods in either a seven or eight weight. I like to use a good quality reel with a solid drag system and if possible coupled with a large arbor capability. Regulations dictate that only floating lines may be used in Newfoundland. We handle about four rods per week, uh, that's our preference and, uh, and the reason for that is to try and keep things uh, on a personal level, one on one. Uh, two on one guiding, and uh, that works very, very well. Uh, you know, the, the guides are very well trained, very professional staff. Uh, they take pride in, in making a bond with their clientele, and uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's a positive experience for everybody. Oh, absolutely. Well, I think that uh, people like to be treated uh, the way you'd like to be treated yourself if you went anywhere. So uh, we always put our best foot forward, and uh, I love to cook. I'm a an artist, so I like to show that in my food. Atlantic salmon are no different than any other migratory fish in regards to where they'll hold in the river. Current seams are a prime area to look for them. A current seam is where two currents of differing speeds meet. 
Water deflecting around rocks will often cause these current seams and also offer ideal holding places for fish. Sometimes the rocks are submerged and hard to spot. This is where the experienced knowledge of your guide is so critical to your success. They know where the fish are in all conditions and it's important to listen to their sage advice. The conditions were finally right and I could switch to a dry fly. I love this type of salmon fishing. It's incredibly visual and very addictive. Oh, yeah, that looks like a nice one. Or is it a grill? I don't know. I don't know, it looks okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look at, all right. Good job, what a take, <laughs> what a take. When we saw this fish before, he came oh, up. Watch the rock. Yeah, oh, oh, going downstream. He, uh, he came up, I think, before and bumped my fly, and then we rested him, which is what Barry had recommended. And so we've gone upstream a bit, and we were uh, throwing up, and what happened was one of my flies was swinging back here, and a uh, fish came after it. So he said, I'll just fish downstream. Oh yeah, it's a nice fish. <laughs> Look at this, it's a nice what fish. What a fighter. Large arbor reel is real important here. Looking around, okay, he's coming right by oh, us. Oh yeah, look oh. at that, Lou, he's a bull, he's a bull. Oh, oh, oh. watch the rock. I know, I got it, I got it above. Okay. Oh, I thought it was below. <laughs> I know, I was scared for a second there. I don't even think it's that big a fish, no, you know No, it's that? not, I think it's just a big grill. Yeah, there are so many fish in this pool, and like you said, we, we've seen like 20, and you, as you, your number goes, if you see 20, that means there's another 20 you can't see. Good job. Nice bright fish. Nice How sweet release. is that? Great fish. Nice and bright. No sea lice, but still very fresh from the sea. What a great couple of days I've had here at Where You Want to Be Lodge in Western Newfoundland. As you can see, pretty muddy, a little bit sweaty. I better go get cleaned up. If you want to learn more about this show, about Western Newfoundland, and about our series, then go to our website at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions.